Reagan, who obviously was a professional entertainer, had an enormous stock of jokes. They used to say that Bob Hope had a vault full of jokes with files and whatnot. Reagan did have that in his own head, but the, that's one thing. The gift of that is, is, is picking the right joke at the right time exactly. uh, no, to make it's brilliant. It's the brilliant. right point. And one of the, uh, Jack made the point inside that, that Gorbachev picked up on it. One of the jokes he loved to tell was when John met Ivan and uh, John said, the United States is a better country than the Soviet Union. I can walk up to the White House and say that Ronald Reagan is doing a terrible job leading the country. And Ivan said, well, what's so big deal about that? I can walk up to the Kremlin and go to Gorbachev and say, I think Ronald Reagan is doing a terrible job. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gorbachev, Jack. Well, Gorbachev, <laughs> after the first two or three meetings, got the point and began to tell jokes himself. And the one that he would tell at times uh, went back to the problems they had with their anti-alcohol campaign. And this, the story is that this fellow is waiting in line for vodka. It's a long line. He waits half an hour. He waits 45 minutes. And finally he said, I've had enough of this. I'm going over to the Kremlin and shoot that fellow. So he goes off, half an hour later he's back. And they said, well, did you shoot him? And he said, oh, hell no, the line there is longer than here. <laughs> <laughs> they really liked each other, but having read both Jack's incredible book, I want to recommend this to everybody. It's called Reagan and Gorbachev, I loved it. And Steve Cohen's book, Soviet Fates and Lost Alternatives. Steve, in your book, you make the case that Gorbachev really wanted to come to an agreement. He, he felt a, a need, he wanted to reform the Soviet Union, and he knew he had to have peace with the West, and that he wanted to be part of the West. He'd already come to that, and he wanted to do it ahead of time. So did he drive this? He, he had this determination. He knew his country was in trouble. He knew what Richard Reeves was saying before. Um, was he the driver? Was he in the driver's seat? In, the, in this relationship with Reagan, you mean? In the determination to end the Cold War, is what I mean. You know, when you, when you encounter a successful partnership, whether it's a commercial one or a marriage, it's probably not a good idea to, dis to, to, to try to identify who's the leading partner. Um, <laughs> the reality is, is that these two men, and Gorbachev just turned 80 last week, uh, my wife, Katrina Vanden Heuvel, the editor of The Nation, who's here, and I were there for the birthday celebration. But he, Gorbachev has already entered history, and he's entered history with Reagan. I think that's true. Uh, if you ask Gorbachev any question about Ronald Reagan, he, he replies only with the most enormous warmth, friendship, and admiration because he knows that the two of them together made it work. If one had been missing, none of that would have happened. That said, as a historian, it does seem to me that it was the emergence of Gorbachev and the determined leadership to reform the Soviet Union in the nuclear arms race and bring Russia into what he called our common European home that was the triggering device. Uh, later, uh, he was dependent heavily on Reagan, again, as I say, meeting him halfway. And I am a sort of lefty Democrat and never voted for Reagan. But when I saw Reagan in 1985 and 86, meeting Gorbachev halfway, and Gorbachev desperately needed that because of this opposition to what he was doing in the Kremlin, I immediately said, Reagan is rising to the call of history, as he did. And it ought to be said that he had advisors at his side, including Ambassador Jack Matlock, who urged him to do this. But on the other hand, presidents can listen to bad advice. In this case, Reagan listened to the right advice. 